Hi, I'm Elise, and it's my first booktube video! Yay! So, I'm gonna start my first video by doing the mid-year freakout book tag. And I thought this would be a good place to start because I'd get like a little bit of all the types of recommendations that I like um, and some of the books that I've liked so far this year and some of the books that I haven't liked so far this year. So it'd be a good way to figure out what my tastes are. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first question, and I'll put the questions and the original content creators down below in the description box so you can see. Um, but the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2022. And this one is actually really easy for me. I have a stack of books over here that I'm going to be pulling from. And then the ones I don't have, I'll put up on the screen. But the best book kind of by far that I've read this year is Ola Poppy. And this is a memoir actually. Um, so it's one of the only nonfiction that I've read this year. And it was phenomenal. So this is by John Paul Brammer. And he kind of was originally known for writing a column called Ola Poppy. Um, and it was like an advice column for queer people. And so this kind of chronologues his time writing the column and also a lot of the rest of his life. It goes a little bit into his childhood and then to current day. And this talks about so much. So not only does it talk a lot about queer identity, it also talks a lot about um, being biracial. So he is biracial um, and what that experience is like for him and how he came to get into his line of work and how he came to write this book. Um, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. Highly, highly recommend. And this book touched me in so many ways. I mean, I laughed while I read this book. I cried while I read this book. So it will come up later in the video. Um, but I am also biracial and a lot of that subject matter resonated with me. And I also, uh, just really was moved by a lot of the like queer identity um, subject matter that he was talking about in this. Um, I thought he did a really good job of being kind of compassionate to whatever someone's journey is. And I really appreciated that. And he's so, so funny, so funny. Um, and that's seen in this column and also seen in this book. So absolutely love this one. Highly recommend. Best book of the year so far. Loved it. Okay, next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2022. And this is not going to be a new answer. I feel like a lot of people are talking about this this year because the show came out. Um, but for me, the best sequel I read so far this year was Heartstopper. This is volume four. And this was actually the first book that I read this year. So I read this all the way back in January. Um, and I read volume four as soon as it came out. So I pre-ordered it. And it was so good. I mean, people don't need me to say how good Heartstopper is. But it's so lovely. I planned it as my first read of the year because I figured I would give it five stars and I did. So I absolutely love this. I thought this was a great like next step in the storyline um, and I'm excited for volume five to see where we go from here. I won't talk about what this volume has in it because it might be spoilery if you haven't read the previous ones. Um, but just absolutely lovely, heartwarming, so precious, but like takes on pretty heavy subject matter in a really hopeful way, which I know is why a lot of people like it. So absolutely love this and this is a little bit of what the art looks like if you haven't looked at it before but so good best sequel I've read this year all right next question is new release you haven't read yet but want to 
And for this I have three. So there are three books that have already come out that I'm like highly, highly anticipating and want to get my hands on, um, but haven't been able to yet. So the first one, and I don't have any of these, so I'll put the picture up on the screen, but the first one is Our Wives Under the Sea. Um, this came out in the beginning of the year, and also I love the UK cover. I love it more than the US cover, so I really want to get that cover instead, which is part of why I haven't bought it yet, because I want to import it. Um, but this one is about a woman whose wife goes on like a submarine mission for her job and when she comes back she's not the same so ominous I've heard it's really good I've seen nothing but good reviews it sounds like the type of story that I would be into it's also queer so it's a like sapphic relationship so I'm super excited want to get to that the next one is we had to remove this post and this one has also been making the rounds it's about a kind of group of content moderators who are tasked with removing things from the internet that don't fit the guidelines. So that have like explicit subject matter that wouldn't be allowed online. It's really slim. It's like a novella type length. Um, also heard nothing but good things. And I'm really curious about kind of exploring the ethical dilemmas that a content moderator must go through and kind of the desensitizing that happens when you see that type of content repeatedly. So it sounds great, really want to get it, love the cover as well. And the last one I really want to read that's already come out is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akwaki Amezi. And this sounds so good. Um, I've read Akwaki Amezi before, I've read The Death of Vivek OG, and I really liked it. So I like their writing style a lot, um, and this is also their first romance. So I'm very interested, lots of people have said that there's great like food talk within it, um, that it doesn't follow the traditional like romance plots, and it kind of subverts some of those, and just when you think you know what's happening, it kind of changes. And I think that sounds really good. Um, and it just seems like a great summer read. So I want to read it sometime this summer. So those are the three that I'm looking forward to. And the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of 2022. And I have two for this. And the first one is What Moves the Dead by T.E. Kingfisher. This one I'm mostly interested in because it's a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, and that's my favorite work by Edgar Allan Poe by far. Um, I love that story, and I really just want to see a new reimagining of it. I think it could be great in the modern day setting. The original story is very much set in like his time, so it's like an old, decaying, almost like castle-like place. Um, so interested in that. I've never read that author before. So I'm not sure what their writing style is going to be like, but I really want to read, read it for the retelling aspect alone. The other one I'm interested in is Bliss Montage, and this is a short story collection um, by the same author as Severance. I haven't read Severance. I have it. It's on my shelf somewhere back there. Um, but I've heard great things about Severance, and then really early reviews of Bliss Montage have been great as well. Um, and some of the stories within there, like the blurb on the back, just sound really interesting. So I want to get my hands on that one. The cover is also gorgeous. Or it has like oranges everywhere and it's like bright orange color. So very intrigued for that one. Next question is biggest disappointment. This one was actually really easy for me. There was one very large disappointment for me this year. And I don't even have the book anymore. I unhauled it. Um, so I'll put it up on the screen. And I love the cover of this. I love the cover so much. It's Modern Times by Kathy Sweeney. And this book, I actually paid to import it because it's not available in the US. So I paid to import it because I love the cover, was super intrigued about the stories, um, and it just really fell flat for me. 
so the stories were very short it was almost flash fiction like and originally like the blurb like I think the first story is about a woman who like loves her husband's dick so much that she takes it to work with him like in a lunchbox so that was the blurb of the first story and I was so intrigued I was like what is gonna be happening here uh, I thought it was gonna be like kind of like sci-fi surrealist like stuff going on but overall it just fell really flat I didn't get what the author was trying to say with any of the stories and because they were so short I didn't get like emotionally invested in any of them they're not interconnected or anything like that but I just nothing really connected with me or resonated with me and I didn't really enjoy it so that was definitely my biggest disappointment because the cover was amazing, the premise sounded amazing, and I paid to import it all the way here and then it didn't work out. So I did get rid of that one already and put it in my little free library and somebody already snatched it up. So hopefully they like it more than I did. Okay, next one is Biggest Surprise. So this is already gonna be a repeat and that's Hola Poppy. I mean, again, just so, so good. And this book wasn't even on my TBR. So I had heard about it. I think it came out last year or maybe the year before. Let's see. Yeah, last year, 2021. So um, I had heard good things about it. But overall, it didn't sound captivating for me personally enough to put it on my TBR and want to read it. Um, but I actually got this as a gift for Christmas for my partner. And they gifted it to me because I had been interested in learning more, kind of diving more into my like biracial experience and what that means for me. Um, and so they bought this because that's a portion of what the author's talking about here. Um, so not only a lovely gift with a lovely sentiment, but I really, really enjoyed it and did resonate with a lot of those aspects of the book. So this was the biggest surprise by far. It wasn't even on my TBR. I read it because I got it as a gift. Chef's kiss, amazing. Okay, so new favorite author. This one was really hard. I haven't read multiple books by a lot of authors this year I think only two um, and this isn't even one of those but this book I just thought was so stunning so stunning and I think just like hands down objectively a brilliant book like I I'm just gonna say flat out like I don't think people could argue that this isn't a brilliant book and that is Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro so this was getting talked about a lot this year because it was um, long listed and then short listed for the International Booker Prize. And it is so good, so, so good. I wish this would have won. This was my pick for what won. But to be fair, I haven't read Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri. So, and I am interested in reading it. So that probably is amazing as well, but I really, really loved this one. Um, this one, is well I should say it's translated by Francis Riddle and it's translated from the Spanish um, and this author is from Buenos Aires and this story follows Elena whose daughter has just died in what appears at least to the police to be a suicide um, and Claudia feels like she knows that it wasn't actually a suicide that she knows who her daughter is and the way in which the suicide was attempted she doesn't believe would actually be done by her um, so that's kind of the plot of what's happening here is she's trying to figure out what happened to her daughter and she's investigating around that is also her experience with Parkinson's so she's in like pretty late stage Parkinson's at this point when we enter the novel. And it's actually really geniusly split up by the like number of pills 
that she's having to take for her Parkinson's. So if you can see like the very beginning, it says morning, second pill. So you're kind of following her day split up by the pills and the pills allow her body to move basically. Um, so she needs them to like do everything. So it follows her around um, and kind of you really experience what it's like to be in the body of someone with Parkinson's like as much as you could through a book. I think the story really wove that brilliantly throughout the novel and it's almost like it's painstaking to like read some of the passages where nothing's happening other than like her trying to get a body part to move and I think that's so intentional because obviously it's painstaking for Elena to not be able to move to get a body part to move so oh, it was just so good it was so so good I even went into it because I knew there was a ton of hype and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna love it as much as everyone said. And I did, it was so brilliant. Love it, highly recommend, highly recommend. Okay, the next question is newest fictional crush. So this one has to go to Fox in Hook, Line, and Sinker. So this is the second in the Bellinger Sisters series by Tessa Bailey. The first one is It Happened One Summer. And I liked this one better than It Happened One Summer. And I don't think that's a popular opinion. I think most people like the first one better, but I really loved this one. I loved um, following this sister. What's her name? Hannah, that's her name. Um, so Hannah, is kind of a PA essentially on a movie that they're filming in this town. It's like an East Coast like crab fishing town uh, and Fox is the love interest and I just loved them both. I loved them both. I loved Fox. He is like funny and charming and also like very sweet and vulnerable with her. So, so good. He also is like portrayed as like just absurdly handsome, which like, I don't know, it's an illustration, but who knows? So, ugh, God, yeah, he was great. He was great, I love this one. So that would be Fictional Crush. And then next one is newest favorite character. And this character I just adored. Um, and that is the dog from Spy Family, which is a manga series. And this dog, you can see, looks like a Great Pyrenees. So in the back, there's actually a section where the um, author, who's Tetsuyo Endo, talks about this dog being based off of a Great Pyrenees and I have a Great Pyrenees. So like that personal collection alone, I was already like, okay, it's over for me. Like I'm gonna love this dog. And what is this dog's name? On the back it just says the dog. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it, but it is so, so good. This is volume four. Um, and this series essentially follows a spy called Midnight and he's tasked with um, infiltrating this private school and in order to do so he has to come up with a family. So he needs to adopt a child to enroll in the school and he also needs to find a wife so he'll be admitted to the school um, and he ends up doing that but the daughter is a telepath and the wife is an assassin and he doesn't know that. So it's this like ragtag crew coming together. None of them know who each other is really or what their like profession slash abilities are. Um, and this volume, a dog enters the chat. So they adopt a dog and this is the dog and the dog just might have special abilities of his own. So super fun, super lighthearted, love this dog, love this dog. 
So that is my new favorite character. Next question is a book that made you cry. Okay, for this I have several. I have cried a lot this year while reading books. I think more than normal. Uh, the first one I'm going to get out of the way because like we already know. Oh, Poppy. I freaking cried like a baby at multiple times during this book. So good. So good. The second one I don't own. I read this from the library, but it's The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. And this book, ooh, I cried so much. This might be the book I cried to the most. And this book is kind of like dystopian. It's about a woman who does something. I don't know if it would be spoiler, spoiler, oh my gosh, spoilerly, spoilery. There we go, that was it <laughs> to say. Um, but she does something pretty bad um, in relation to her daughter and gets you know reported to basically like child protective services but like child protective services in the future and um, they end up enrolling her in a program a new program called the school for good mothers um, and she gets sent to this facility with other mothers who have been reported and they're going through this new program that CPS has created to try and rehabilitate them but it's much darker and nefarious than what she originally thinks it's going to be going into it um, the book is heartbreaking heartbreaking and I cried so much I mean like it's really trying to tug on your heartstrings so I think that's intentional but she's a she's a very complicated character um, very gray character I thought they did a really good job with her of making her like realistic enough like what she does is horrible but also like it happens and then like this one moment changing her whole life but not her whole life but like everyone around her's life like her whole family is impacted um, and we see all of those effects and it's devastating. So I really enjoyed that one. I gave it four stars. I didn't like love, love, love it, but I thought it was really good. Um, the last one that made me cry, and this one was almost like happy tears, is Love That Journey For You, or For Me, sorry, Love That Journey For Me. And this is by Emily Garside. And you can see the little subtitle there is The Queer Revolution of Schitt's Creek. So this one is all about the impact that Schitt's Creek as a show had on our society and had on like queer identity and what it meant for a lot of people. Um, so this is like Emily's, I'm gonna call it an opinion piece because I think that's what it is. Like there's a lot of assumptions and maybe even opinions in here. And that was a little bit of why I didn't like it. I gave this three stars. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, but this, like, Schitt's Creek is my favorite TV show. Favorite TV show of all time. And it brought me back to so many amazing moments in the show. And so many moments that are just, like, really, really meaningful. And I loved it. So these were happy tears for sure. Okay. So that's it for the books that made me cry. Books that made me happy... These, I'm gonna go through so quick because I think I've already talked about all of these. Hola Poppy, I laughed, laughed so much. There's a scene in a, a restaurant, I think hilarious. It's so good. Um, Heartstopper, volume four. Of course, that made me happy, how could it not? And then the last one, Spy Family. This one I think is the lightest one of all four of the volumes, love. If you need a little piece of joy, highly recommend any of those. And I think all of those were five stars for me, all those three books. Okay, getting to the last few questions. Favorite book to movie adaptation? 
So, I mean, again, everybody knows this. I actually haven't watched the adaptation yet. I've been putting it off because I'm trying to save it for when I need it, but I have no doubt I will love it. So that, and then the other one is Leave the World Behind. So this is getting adapted into a movie, and this has um, Marshala Ali and Julia Roberts in it. Like, what? This was also a five-star read for me. I cannot wait. It's kind of like suspense. The uh, premise is this family goes to essentially what is like an Airbnb, and then the owners come back and tell them that like something potentially catastrophic has happened and like if they can all stay there together and the unfolding storyline is you know what if anything did actually happen what's going on and how are they going to deal with it it's definitely a slow burn like this wouldn't be a, a thriller by any means um, I would say it's like a literary suspense novel but really really good can't wait to watch the movie okay and the last two questions we have most beautiful book you've bought this year and I have a couple answers for this the first one is Philomath and this is by Devin Walker Figueroa this is a poetry collection I mean look at this look at her gorgeous and this cover is like textured so it has like ridges all over it it feels so so good and then this like illustration is like a tree ring which also the other day I heard this was called a tree cookie I've never heard that in my life like tree cookie I love that but it's like all the rings of a tree like oh so so gorgeous I also love this poetry collection gave it four stars recommend it. Another favorite cover that I bought this year is also poetry and this is Goldenrod by Maggie Smith. Like look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. I love the blue and the yellow together. It's one of my favorite color combinations. Love these little plants. I don't know what they are. Are they marigolds? No they're not marigolds. Whatever they are. Love it. Love it. Love it. This one I didn't like as much. I gave it three stars. A few of the poems I really loved, but the vast majority were just like okay to me. And then the last one for this is going to be Bluets by Maggie Nelson. Are you going to be able to see that? Are you going to be able to see that? There we go. So it's super, super simple. And everything other than the cream is blue so the font is just different shades of blue and it's just like gorge i love it love it i gave this three stars again some of the pieces i loved but most of them were like meh to me um, and this is all about the color blue so like the love affair that Maggie Nelson has with the color blue and it's just like little vignettes like little snippets there it is yeah all right and last question is what books do you really need to read by the end of the year and oh I didn't grab these oh well I'll just insert them um, so two of them are books that I have been reading for a long time way too long of a time at this point and like really just want to have them done before the year ends um, I'm liking them both but it's just been slow going so the first one is our prisons obsolete and this is a nonfiction all about whether or not prisons are obsolete um, so I'm like halfway through it's a really small book um, but I'm reading it a chapter at a time. It's very dense. Like this is big brain energy, very dense. So I want to finish that one up. The second one is Love Letters of Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West. 
and I mean it is exactly what it sounds like it's just a collection of all the letters that they wrote back and forth to each other um, so like sapphic it's been good so far but there's a decent amount of letters and it isn't something like there's not there's no plot really like you're kind of getting to unfold their life with them through their correspondence but it's pretty like slow so I'm only reading like a few letters at a time and that's why it's taking me so long but I do really want to finish it and the third one is actually it's right here the third one is Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen this is actually an autographed copy and I got this second hand like there she is and it's like a hardback autograph copy second hand like what so I must have really hated it but I want to read this really bad this why the reason I'm saying I need to read this by the end of the year is I have a couple TBR challenges that I'm trying to do to get through some of my physical TBR and I finished almost most of my challenges for the year already um, except for one and I have two books left to read for it, and this is one of them um, obviously chunkster this we know I've never read Franzen before I've heard a lot of people say that this is their favorite um, and it sounds like something I would be interested in so like a family drama religious commentary things going on and I think it's gonna be a trilogy so I really want to get to this by the end of the year as well so I can finish up that challenge so there we go that is it this was my mid-year freak out tag and my first video so very exciting my next video that's gonna come out is my best books of the year so far so hopefully that should be coming out soon and I will see you all then. Bye.